announcing the start of a new era. On October 23rd, Libya's interim leader, Mustafa Abdel Jalil, officially declared an end to Muammar Gaddafi's regime. But in his speech about moving forward, he spoke a new law of the land. Those words sent a collective chill down the spines of many of Libya's women. Sharia law is the religious law of Islam, but it has different interpretations among modernists, traditionalists, and fundamentalists. Some women fear the more extreme interpretation of Sharia law will weaken their voice and influence within society at a time when they want a greater say in their country's future. Fatma Gandur has been advocating women's rights in Libya for years, but it's only now that her voice is being heard by a wider audience. Since Gaddafi's downfall, Gandur has been hosting nationally broadcast radio and television programs. And her book about prominent women, suppressed for years under Gaddafi, is finally seeing the light. Gandur considers her role an important one in Libyan society. She wants the chance to enlighten the university students she teaches and maybe even run for political office. But gaining a political seat won't be easy. Right now, only one woman has a seat within the NTC. And some suggest no Libyan women are qualified to work in government. Such bias could put the personal safety of any woman considering running for political office at risk. Libya's women are considered highly educated with a literacy rate of 73 percent. In the country's second largest city, Benghazi, 40 percent of lawyers are women. Still though, women here continue to struggle with cultural traditions that place them in lower ranking positions than men. Salha Nasser Haddad is a journalist who wants to travel the country and tell its stories. But current customs require her to be accompanied whenever traveling by a male family member. In this case, it's her younger brother. In the new Libya, more and more women are banding together to make their voices heard. In some cases, men are also spearheading parties that advocate women's rights. Hussam Najer was among the fighters who helped depose Muammar Gaddafi. He's now laid down his arms to take up a political agenda. The party he's shaping is pillared on democracy, moderacy, and Islamic values. He believes that Libya's future can be governed by Islam, but with a middle-of-the-road approach. For the political parties to step up, for young, vibrant uh, females and males to stand up, and, and you know, they, they, I want them to realize that this is their chance. This is the only, probably the only chance at the moment for them to, to get their voice heard and, and to be part of everything before it gets taken over by the, 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 um, the older, older regime kind of guys and stuff like that. The future of Libya's women depends upon striking a balance. Many countries have Sharia law within their legal systems, but the application and interpretation of those laws weighs heavily on how women are treated. Perhaps the bigger challenge here is in reforming old ideas and prejudices surrounding women within Libyan society. It's a tough challenge, but many women and some men are willing to face it in order to ensure that their voices are heard within this society. For World Insight, this is Stephanie Freed in Tripoli.